Ever wondered what keeps the world's 800 million vehicles running every day? The answer lies deep beneath the Earth's surface, transformed over millions of years from ancient organic materials into the fuel that powers our vehicles. But how does this black gold turn into gasoline that fuels our daily lives? What started as the carbon-rich remnants of dead animals and plants slowly turned into the viscous black liquid we know as crude oil. Alongside it, natural gas and coal formed. But it is crude oil that captures our focus for its role in creating gasoline. This process, taking millions of years, is nature's way of recycling, turning the biological material of the past into the energy resources of today. It all starts with this ancient natural alchemy deep beneath our feet. This is the raw material for gasoline, the first step in a process that connects the ancient past with the fast-paced world of today. Crude oil is pulled from the depths of the earth, but it's far from ready to power our cars. This thick black liquid needs to go through a transformation to become the gasoline we use every day. The magic happens in a refinery. So, how does this transformation happen? It all starts with getting the crude oil to the places where the refining happens. The refining process is multi-stage. Initially, crude oil is heated in a tall tower, where it separates into distinct hydrocarbons due to their varying boiling points, akin to water boiling into steam. This separation leads to different product layers. Subsequently, these separated hydrocarbons undergo additional purification, such as blending, impurity removal, and transformation into new products. This process marks the transition of crude oil into the gasoline used to fuel our vehicles. Pumping crude oil from beneath the Earth's surface is the next process. It can be light, medium, heavy, or even extra heavy, each type varying in thickness, weight, and sulfur content. To get this valuable resource out of the ground, companies use a few different methods. The most straightforward way is to rely on the natural pressure within the oil reservoir to push the oil to the surface. However, not all oil can be extracted this easily. When natural pressure falls short, supplementary methods like fracking are employed. This entails injecting steam, water, or gas into the ground, elevating underground pressure to extract oil from rock. Another approach involves the use of chemicals that alter oil's properties, enhancing its flow for smoother extraction. Once the crude oil has been successfully pumped out, it needs to be transported to a refinery where it can be turned into usable products like gasoline. The methods for moving this oil vary, each with its own set of advantages and challenges. Pipelines are the backbone of crude oil transportation, especially over land. They offer a safe, efficient, and cost-effective way to move large volumes of oil across vast distances. The network of pipelines crisscrossing oil-producing countries is extensive and designed to minimize the risk of spills and environmental impact while ensuring a steady flow of crude to refineries. When oil needs to cross oceans, tankers are used. While tanker transport is essential for international trade, it requires planning and regulation to safeguard against spills that could harm marine ecosystems. Trains offer another method for transporting crude, particularly in regions where pipeline infrastructure is limited or non-existent. Rail can provide flexibility and reach areas that pipelines can't. However, the risk of derailments and spills makes rail transport less ideal than pipelines. Refining hinges on fractional distillation, where crude oil is heated in a column. As temperature varies, hydrocarbons vaporize at distinct points, then condense and are gathered, sorting crude oil into similar property fractions. The type of crude oil being processed plays a significant role in the refining process. Different crudes, characterized by their viscosity, density, and sulfur content, require varying degrees of refining to produce the desired petroleum products. This variability means that refineries must adjust their processes based on the specific characteristics of the crude oil they're working with. The primary outputs of the refining process include premium and regular gasoline widely used as vehicle fuels. These fuels are tailored to enhance engine performance and adhere to diverse performance and emission criteria. 
Ethanol is also frequently mixed with gasoline to enhance fuel efficiency and lower emissions, necessitating refining adjustments to meet stringent standards while considering its impact on engine performance. In a refinery, the essential distillation process unfolds within a distillation tower. Crude oil is heated inside this tower with precision, vaporizing distinct hydrocarbons at their unique boiling points. As the temperature increases, lighter components rise first, creating a separation within the tower. As these vapors rise, they encounter progressively cooler temperatures. This gradual cooling allows the vapor to condense back into liquid form at different levels of the tower, based on their boiling points. It's a beautifully orchestrated separation process that relies on the fundamental physical properties of the hydrocarbons. At the top of the tower, the lightest hydrocarbons, such as those that make up natural gas, condense. These are the first to cool and liquefy due to their lower boiling points. As we move down the tower, the hydrocarbons that condense become progressively heavier and denser. Midway, we find the components used to produce fuels like gasoline and jet fuel. At the very bottom of the tower, the heaviest hydrocarbons are found. These include asphalt and tar, substances characterized by their high boiling points. They are so dense and heavy that they remain liquid throughout the process, condensing at the tower's base. Before discussing the next step, if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to stay updated with more amazing content like this. After distillation, the next step in oil refining is cracking. This process involves breaking down large hydrocarbon molecules into smaller, more useful ones. By doing this, we obtain the necessary smaller molecules for producing efficient fuels like gasoline for vehicles. Cracking simplifies the complex puzzle of crude oil components. There are two main ways refineries crack those big molecules into smaller ones, catalytic cracking and thermal cracking. Catalytic cracking uses a catalyst to quickly break large hydrocarbon molecules into smaller ones at lower temperatures, acting as a shortcut in the refining process. Thermal cracking, on the other hand, relies on high heat to split big molecules into smaller fragments. Both methods aim to produce high-quality gasoline with lower sulfur content and high octane rating, enhancing engine performance and environmental friendliness. After crude oil is distilled and cracked, the next step is blending. Blending is where we mix different hydrocarbons to make the perfect type of gasoline for different needs. Why do we blend? Well, gasoline isn't a one-size-fits-all kind of deal. Things like where you live, the time of year, and what kind of car you drive can all affect the kind of gasoline you need. For example, gasoline that works great in a cold climate might not be the best for a hot one, and the gasoline for a high-performance sports car might be different from what you'd use in a family sedan. During the blending process, refiners mix anywhere from 5 to 15 different hydrocarbons, each with its special properties. Some might make the gasoline burn cleaner, reducing emissions from your car. Others might help your car start better in cold weather or make the engine run smoother. By carefully choosing which hydrocarbons to mix, refiners can create different blends of gasoline. This means they can make a special blend for winter in the mountains, a different one for summer in the city, and everything in between. It's all about matching the gasoline to the needs of the drivers and their vehicles, ensuring that everyone gets the best performance and efficiency from their fuel. The last step is ensuring the fuel's quality and getting it to gas stations. Quality control tests check for things like octane levels and sulfur content to make sure the gasoline is good for both cars and the environment. Once it passes these tests, the gasoline is sent out through pipelines, trucks, or trains to reach gas stations. This whole process makes sure that when you fill up your car, the gasoline is safe, reliable, and ready to use. So, that's the process of how crude oil turns into gasoline. It's not just about making fuel, it's about smart science and caring for our planet. This process helps us do everything, from driving to work to going on road trips. We'd love to hear what you think, so please leave a comment below. And until we talk about something interesting again, keep noticing the amazing science that makes our everyday life better.